Hey guys, so we got another YouTube video here for you. We're going to talk about how me and my wife met many, many years ago. <laughs> All right. So you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. So of course we've posted plenty of stories and wrote pieces about how we met. First, I know this is not a relationship channel, but knowing my husband's story along with my story kind of gives anybody who's my subscribers a chance to kind of know who I am. That makes sense. That makes sense. So um, go ahead, Chris. So the story all starts. With a young mirror, Christopher Brooks. Go ahead. I forgot what year. It's 1997. It started in 1997. 97. And I was living with my parents in Redford Township in Michigan. And the school I was zoned to at the time was Frank Murphy Middle School, which was like maybe a mile and a half down the road from my house down telegraphing um, in Detroit, basically. But it just so happens that this girl that I really, really liked named Deprina Gavoldo was also zoned at that school because you lived at the time <laughs> on St. Mary's? No, on De Costa. On De Costa, okay. Um, was also zoned to that school. So what happened was the first time I got to school, our first class was English class uh, with a woman named Miss Lumpkin. I can never think yeah, of her first name. Yeah, Miss Lumpkin, I remember her. Um, and so the classroom was divided into like a big section on this side of the room and a big section on the other side of the room. It was a long um, sort of, not hallway, but like a long sort of a throughway aisle, basically, down the middle. And uh, <laughs> I guess it was just fate because I was on the opposite side of that little aisle than Deprino was. So for most of the English class, I had like a great view of her. Like I can look at her across uh, across the aisleway for most of class. And that's how we met. That's what I ended up doing. It's a funny story, like that first semester, even though I love English and I went on to become a journalist, I did not do well in English class at all that first semester because I spent most of my time looking at her. And uh, I remember it very vividly because my dad came in like right toward the end of the first semester and talked to the teacher and I was so embarrassed that he came in there and it was about my grades and stuff. So second semester, I sort of like, you know, got my act together and got better grades in English class, but it was all because of her. And so this is his version of the story because um, unfortunately, and I'm sorry, I always be saying I'm sorry, Unfortunately, I don't remember him. I remember some little boy that always used to be staring at me, but I don't really remember all the stories that he remembers. But he's remembered these stories about me, like him saying stuff to me and me ignoring him. Seventh grade was a really, really tough time for me. That was also around the same time, um, like my parents uh, were in two different marriages and, you know, I had, my mama had, had us go live with my step my stepmother and, and my daddy. So um, we was living way like in Highland Park. It was a really, really tough time for me. I mean, I remember seventh grade, but I also, you know, just, you know, had my little friends and just really wasn't paying attention to him, even though he actually, like, he was friends with one of the people I used to think around, right? Like D'Angelo Sutton or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I just never really paid attention to him. And like, we always talk about this story and still to this day, I still be trying to think like, dang, I'm so sorry. I wish I would remember, remember you. But this story has a happy ending because around October, November, I want to say, of 2009, um, I guess he just never forgot my name. Very unique name, y'all. That pretty guy, Bodo. Follow um, me on Facebook, right? Exactly. Follow me on Facebook. And start inboxing me. So this is when I was about 25. The year I was 25, but about to turn 26. Yeah. Um, it was like, I still was remember the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no. October, November is when you met inboxed me oh, in 2009. Okay. That was winter. Yeah. And then you came to live in Detroit yeah, in yeah. January. 
So he came to Detroit. Uh, well, first he spent about two months on Skype, messaging each other back and forth on Skype. I'm talking long conversations. We used to fall asleep together on Skype, right? Literally used to be like, you put your laptop, I put my laptop. We used to literally just sit there mm -hmm. and fall asleep. And, like, I wish we could pull up the old transcripts. Yeah, yeah. It was just long transcripts of everything we was talking about. And so then, that's when he told me he was going to be home, coming home, and around January. And I'm like, for real? I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'm doing my thing in the city. I'm partying and working hard or whatever. Um, and so, um, he... Moved to the city. What the day was? What January 11th? I want to say the day he got there, probably around midnight. And um, I was living in downtown Detroit, and his mother wasn't staying too far. And I like hopped right in my car, like I'm coming to get you the same freaking day, right, Chris? Yeah. What had happened was I was living in Texas at the time. Mm -hmm. I had quit my job. I was a newspaper reporter in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. and decided that I didn't want to stay there and I actually wanted to go to graduate school. So I quit and moved to Texas with my father. My father was living in McKinney, Texas at the time. So I spent like three or four months doing absolutely nothing except studying for the GRE because my only option at this point was to go to graduate school. And that's when we started talking because when I wasn't, when I wasn't studying, I was talking to her. And if you remember, when I did come back in January, I had those flashcards and he was, yeah, I remember he was the testing me for those flashcards. Yeah. Vocabulary words you gotta learn. Yeah. A, I was pretty sure I was gonna get in one of the grad schools I had already applied to like six. And then I also was trying to get my mom enrolled in, in community college. And that was something that you just can't do from many, many states away. So I came home to do that and then wait to pick whichever grad school I was going to so we actually found each other at a really um, opportune time at least for me in my life because I was sort of in between things like I had quit my full time working as a journalist and I was just in limbo until one of my graduate schools decided that I was going to be accepted and then I was going to you know leave the city from there so it gave me like some free time to really sort of develop my relationship with you. And I would be busy being the turn up queen and y'all can see we, um, I, I always say we the same, but we different. Because we kind of like those type of people who, like, just match well. Because I'm outspoken. I, you know, talk to people. And Chris is more, what's the word, introvert? Mm -hmm. He's more introverted. Um, if y'all only knew the struggle to get him on his camera. Anyway, but I love him. Anyway, so, um, you know, the relationship started. He actually made me read a book uh, before we actually got in a relationship. Because, you know, he's a writer and he reads. So, I actually read this book called uh, Peony and Love. I was down in Miami. Me and my friends, I went down to Miami about five or six, five, four or five months after he had moved to Detroit. And I was literally in Miami reading this book. So, um, that's kind of different. You usually don't have people that be like, okay, do X, Y, Z. But I actually, he was like, if you read this book, then, you know, I'll make you my girlfriend. <laughs> and... Which is so crazy to me. But, I mean, it was a really good book. I still remember the book to this day. And I think that's probably one of the most significant things about this relationship. Like, anybody can read a book. So, it wasn't like, you got to do this. How you hear some people be like, they boyfriends. We tell them to do some crazy stuff. Just so they, He just was like, read a book. So, I really could appreciate right. that. So, then, after she finished reading the book and we're officially dating, just like I thought would happen, I got accepted to a couple of grad schools. Uh, I got accepted to one in Baltimore, um, and then I got accepted to one here in New York. I decided to go to NYU, and, um, you know, I remember us laying in your bed, in your apartment, and, like, really deciding whether or not you was going to come with me. And I remember thinking, man, I can't do this move without you. All right, all right. Um, and so you decided to come with me, and we that was our pretty much our first f foray into... The New York City Metropolitan Yeah, area. it was like literally, y'all, November, December 2009, we're talking. January, he came to Detroit. April, I read a book. We became a couple. And by August, I'm like, I'm going to Detroit with you. Um, we had a lot of, I had a lot of backlash. My family was like, how you just going to leave and, and go with it? My thought process was, I had already... Felt in love, fell in love, and I'm like, 
If anything go wrong, trust y'all not going nowhere. Detroit is going to always be here. Home is going to, I mean, my mom, I mean, y'all, my friends had unfriended me on Facebook. That's how bad it was. Like, people was really, really mad. Remember, it was like a whole yeah. drama. Yeah. People was mad at me. They was like, how you just going to leave out of the state with this dude and whoop, whoop, whoop. So we got really, really a lot of backlash. I mean, you would have thought Chris was a dope dealer or something, like, for real, right? Yeah. Or somebody with a criminal worker. But it was like, you only live once. You know, plenty of people decide to leave out the state and go with somebody they say they love or move to another state for a dude. And if it don't go well, just come back home. You live life, you have the experience, and it happened, right? And the con the context of this was like I had at this point became a master mover because I had moved from home in Detroit when I was a high school senior up to Mount Pleasant to do undergrad work. Yeah. And then graduated from there and moved to Kentucky, then Virginia. Then the bride's yeah. really, really easy for me to say, okay, you come with me, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, pack this, this, so that, we'll wait for this stuff, and we're gone. We got us a little apartment in Brooklyn that was literally a broom closet for like 1200 a month. That's like sort of dating where we were at that time, because I would kill for 1200 a month right now. Right? Yeah, look, but, the struggle is real, y'all. It was, it was a broom the closet. The struggle is real. And then uh, I went to graduate school, and she was working, and uh, our relationship just kept, you know, Blossoming from there, yeah. Really. I mean, it ain't been perfect, right? Yeah, right. you know, we always had our ups and downs, and you know, and uh, temptations or whatever. I mean, anything that's really gonna last long is is not gonna always be perfect. You gotta go through some things to really know, you know, how right. things gonna work out, and if somebody gonna stick it out. Because we had our broke days in New York, we had horrible neighbors, um, and then we moved from New York. I mean, our car had gotten, his car, he got an accident. He bought a car because we was about to get ready to move to Delaware. Mm -hmm. We had this whole Twitter thing that went kind of semi-viral. And then he ended up not being work there. We had to go back to Detroit for about a month. But because the story went viral, right, mm -hmm. he ended up actually getting a job in Florida. So then we ended up moving to Florida. I'm all in tow. I'm ready with him. We move. We drive down to Florida. First, he was like, "You want to do Florida or Connecticut?" He kind of like baited those two jobs against each other. And I'm like, "Look, I don't want no more winners." So we end up going to Florida, right? Jacksonville. Jacksonville, Florida. Was there for a little tour. Um, we really had a hard time in Florida because we had that one year where we was like on our hustle, hustle grind. Um, because you know, newspaper jobs, you get laid off and stuff like that. So, you know me, I stepped into action, so we was all working on the job. That's when I decided to really, really go back to school full time. Because we was living in New York for short, such a short time, I actually didn't even get to do full two semesters at NYU. And it was a private college, so when I ended up going back to school in Florida, they took away my credits. Yep. Like, went through so much stuff, but we had a lot of big things. We found our, our kids, a.k.a. our kiddos. Right, mm -hmm. got them from Jacksonville. Um, I got my first, bought my first car. Right, Chris bought my car for me, right. um, and I graduated for my with my AA degree, first in my family, um, and then we end up going to Plant City. Actually, very advantageous because she transferred to the University of South Florida, which turned out to be perfect, just like perfect school for you. Yeah, perfect you school for me. Um, so stayed there, worked for a little while. And then just to sort of speed up the process, um, somewhere halfway through her finishing undergrad, I actually got a job in Rochester, New York. Mm -hmm. So we had to split for a little while. We actually lived apart for almost two years. Yeah, almost two years. Um, and I lived in upstate New York and worked at the paper in Rochester while she finished her, yeah. her degree at University of South and, and even though he stayed up there, I actually came up there for the summer, did an internship there, right. came up there for winter break. Um, I mean, you know, we were talking on the phone and stuff, we got like two minutes, but it was all good. And then in the end, I actually ended up graduating last year in 2017. And y'all know the wedding story. I told y'all the wedding story. After I graduated, we actually ended up having our wedding and my graduation celebrations all on the same weekend. And all those same people that were so against us moving was all the same people that ended up showing up at our wedding. So in the end, it was really, really nice. Um, and that was our story.
In a nutshell, right? At least the story so far. We still got a lot. We still got a lot, got a lot to go. That was our story. I'm going to say I'm out. And then you say I'm out. Okay? Mm. And I'm out. I'm out. What are you doing? The, the camera will pick these up for um, for cover photos. Oh. You don't know about that YouTube life. Don't forget, you can follow me on all social media. The links are in the info box. And thank you for watching.